Hi everyone, so today we're going to talk about the Earth's season, so let's get started. So, the first thing that you need to know, and probably the most important thing, is that seasons on the Earth are caused by the 23.5 degree tilt of the Earth's axis and the Earth's revolution. This means that the Earth isn't just like um straight like this line right here. Instead, when the Earth spins, and we've talked about this before, the Earth spins on its axis, right? And this axis is actually has a tilt of 23.5 degrees, just like you see here. So instead of the Earth spinning like this, it actually uh, spins on this tilted axis. So it's actually spinning like this in a tilted manner. And this is showing over here. And because of this tilt, right, as it's spinning, um, that's uh, it causes uneven, uneven distribution of heat uh, throughout the Earth that's coming from the sun. And that is what causes seasons. Uh, and it's not just the tilt. The Earth also has to go around or revolve around the sun to experience seasons. So two things cause seasons, the 23.5 degree tilt of the Earth and the Earth's revolution. So go and write this down in your note packet. Seasons are caused by, mainly caused by the tilt of the earth, which is 23.5 degrees. You should memorize this. If you would like, you can also write in the corner that it's also caused by the earth's revolution. Or you can also write this in your note packet. So let's look at a simulation of the earth's seasons, just like here. Okay, so uh, this is the earth. This is the sun. This is the top view. This is the side view. This is the moon, but we're not very focused on the moon right now. Notice that the Earth is tilted on its axis, and the tilt is 23.5 degrees. And we're currently looking at the 23.5 degree north latitude, this red dot right here. Okay, that's what we're focusing on. And over here, this shows us the different months um, as the Earth is going around the sun. So let's see what happens. So notice that the earth, when the Earth is in this position, the side that's facing the sun is experiencing daytime, and the side that's not is experiencing nighttime. And the Earth rotates, we're getting day and night. And notice just uh, as the Earth is rotating, it's also going around the sun very slowly. So let's speed it up slightly more. So it's starting to go around the sun. And it's eventually going to end up here. Now, notice over here, actually, let's move a little further um, and see the other sides. I think when the Earth comes here, it's going to be a little more visible. So let's move on to here, when the Earth is in this position, this side of the sun. Notice that when the Earth is in this position, because of the tilt of the Earth, the Earth is actually tilted towards the sun. Do you see that? And when it does that, the northern hemisphere right here is actually experiencing a lot of sunlight, more um, um, amount or more duration of sunlight, I should say. Uh, it's spending more time in the sun than the southern hemisphere. Do you see how most of the southern hemisphere is in darkness now, but most of the northern hemisphere is in sunlight? Um, and when the Earth rotates over here, notice that the northern hemisphere, uh, since... Um, it's tilted towards the sun and the earth is rotating the northern hemisphere <clears throat> is mostly spending it that it's time in the sunlight do you see that that's why in the summertime this is around june specifically around june 21st uh which is the first day of summer um the northern hemisphere which is where we are is experiencing um longer durations of sunlight and that's why the days are getting longer because the locations are spending even when the earth is rotating these locations are spending longer times in the sun but notice that in the southern hemisphere it's the opposite as the earth is rotating most of the southern hemisphere is still in the darkness right southern hemisphere is experiencing winter at this time so when the northern hemisphere is experiencing summer the southern hemisphere is experiencing winter because of the tilt of the earth the southern hemisphere is tilted away, so it's not really experiencing much sunlight. And the amount of sunlight that it does experience, the locations in the southern hemisphere, are um, only experiencing sunlight for a short period of time. That's why in the wintertime, the days are shorter. And you'll see this here. Uh, in the southern hemisphere, the, there's not much sunlight, but in the northern hemisphere, uh, the different locations are spending more time in the sun. Okay. 
Um, so let's move on to see what happens when the earth comes here. So I'm going to speed it up slightly more. And so the earth is still rotating and revolving around the sun. And it's slowly finding its way over here and around this position, right? Let's speed it up slightly more. So it's slowly finding its way here. And notice now that the earth is not actually tilting towards the sun or away from the sun. It's kind of tilting towards the side. The tilt is still 23.5 degrees, right? The tilt hasn't changed. It's the position of the earth around the sun that's changed. And now the earth, the sun is hitting the earth um, from the side. And it's mostly hitting the equator. And this is actually when we uh, experience fall in the northern hemisphere um, and um, spring in the southern hemisphere. So around this time, there's 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of nighttime. Since um, the sun is mostly hitting at the equator and the earth isn't tilted towards or away from the sun, it's at the side. Um, it's kind of equal amounts of daylight and equal uh, amounts of nighttime throughout the whole earth. Okay, so now we're moving, starting to move towards this side of the earth. Let's see what happens. So it's spinning and revolving, rotating, revolving. And then now we end up on this side of the earth. And this is around December, specifically December, around December 21st, which is the first day of winter in the Northern Hemisphere. And notice in the Northern Hemisphere, um, now it's tilted away from the sun. And since it's tilted away, notice that this red dot that we were looking at, this location, this latitude, it's going to spend, as the Earth is ro rotating, it's going to spend more time in the darkness and barely enough time in the light, right? And that's why it's so cold in the winter for us. Uh, in the northern hemisphere but in the southern hemisphere this time the southern hemisphere is facing towards the sun so as the earth rotates the southern hemisphere is actually spending more time in the daylight uh in the sunlight right so the southern hemisphere experiences summer experiences summer and the northern hemisphere experiences winter let me slow it down a little and show you so you see how the northern hemisphere is barely spending any time in the sun that red dot but if this red dot was in the southern hemisphere, uh, there would be it would be spending more time there, okay, in the sun. Uh, and let's keep going. So now, if I show you this area again, so after winter, for us, it is spring, right? So when the Earth reaches this area right here, one more time. Notice that once again, the earth isn't tilting towards or away from the sun. It's tilting towards the side and most of the sunlight is hitting the, at the equator. Notice that half of the earth is lit and half of the earth is not lit. Um, it's equal, right, on both sides. So all parts of the earth are going to experience equal amounts of daylight and equal amounts of nighttime because half of the earth is lit and half of the earth is not. Okay, and once again, let me speed it up a lot more. We're back to, oops, I actually accidentally slowed it down. What is happening? And we're back to summer again in the Northern Hemisphere and winter again in the Southern Hemisphere in June 21st or around that time. And then we're back to fall here where equal amounts of daylight and nighttime are ex being experienced throughout the whole world. Uh, it's fall in the top northern hemisphere and uh, spring in the southern hemisphere. And then over here, we're experiencing winter in the northern hemisphere, summer in the southern hemisphere. And then, yeah, it just keeps cycling and cycling and cycling. Over here in the northern hemisphere, we're moving from winter to the summer, right? So it's um, in the northern hemisphere, we're experiencing spring. But in the southern hemisphere, we're going from summer to winter. So the southern hemisphere is experiencing the fall. Uh, one more thing that I would like to show you is a graph of the sol amount of solar energy coming in or hitting the earth and the hours of daylight. Okay. And I'm just going to speed this up and show you that in June 21st, when it's summer for us, notice that around that time, we're getting the most of the sun's energy and our hours of daylight are starting to increase around June. Uh, we're spending more time in the sun. And then as we're starting to move towards this side, notice that especially here, 
um, our solar energy, our amount of sunlight coming towards the northern hemisphere is getting lower. Also, the hours of daylight that we're experiencing in the northern hemisphere is also getting lower. So that's why in the summertime, we're experiencing the most hours of daylight. Day days are longer. It's hotter. That's because we're getting so much more energy from the sun. But in the wintertime, we're getting less amount of daylight. It's cooler um, and so on. Okay, so let's go back here. Oh, actually, let's. I wanted to show you one more thing before I move back. What would do you think would happen if, say, this is the normal angle of the Earth, right? Twenty three point five degrees. What if the Earth's tilt wasn't twenty three point five degrees? What if it tilted way more, maybe even like ninety degrees? Okay, so tilting this way from this area up to ninety degrees, kind of like this. What would happen? Well, notice now that. Before it was uh, over here, it was winter time for us, right? But now for the northern hemisphere, it's going to be in complete darkness. And the southern hemisphere is going to be in complete sunlight. So the southern hemisphere is uh, normally experiencing summer over here, but the summers are going to be way hotter if the Earth's tilt increases. And the winters in the northern hemisphere are going to be way cooler. Over here, it still seems like it's going to be around 12 hours of day and 12 hours um, of nighttime in um, the spring and fall. But then when we come over here, now the Northern Hemisphere is experiencing a lot of sunlight. It's barely ever ex escaping it. So it's going to be very hot. And the Southern Hemisphere is going to barely experience any sunlight. So their winters are going to be very, very cold. So notice if my tilt increased, uh, the temperatures in the summer and winter time would be extreme. Okay, and this is what it's showing over here. As my tilt is starting to increase up to 90 degrees, um, if that ever happened, it ha doesn't happen or it hasn't happened. If it did, then our winter time would be very, very cool, extremely cold, and our summertime would be extremely 